What's up everybody, I am not a software engineer, but I was able to create my own AI models of Tom DeLonge and Mark Hoppus so I could create my own Blink-182 song using their voices. I had a friend of mine create the actual instrumental for this and then I sang over it and then applied my models to my voice to make a song that I think sounds pretty convincing. So this actually required me to do a few things. One was to capture audio from my vinyl record collection to create the models, extract the vocals using ultimate vocal remover, and then use open source tooling to create the models themselves and ultimately apply them to my voice. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is the U-Control UCA222 USB audio interface. Here are the instructions and uh, we're not gonna look at those. So this is basically what it looks like. It's a small compact USB device that we can go ahead and plug into the computer and then take the RCA out for my turntable and then put that, uh, basically have the headphones out to the Sono so I can monitor that. I'm gonna turn the volume up, but the volume down on the Sono so I don't want it to be too loud. And here's the record that I'm actually gonna capture. And of course we go over to the computer and make sure that the interface is selected and open up Audacity. So in Audacity, I'm gonna do the same thing, make sure that the USB audio codec is selected and we can go ahead and hit record. And uh, we'll go ahead and start playing the record. And of course, we'll listen to the whole thing. And then we'll go ahead and export this as a wave and you can call it whatever you want. I decided to call it Blanco 92 side A and we'll go ahead and save that as a wave. And then now is the time to repeat the exact same process for side B. Once again in Audacity, we're going to load up and refer to the song listing. We're going to load up side A and then basically extract this track at a time and save this uh, file uh, basically seven times and uh, make sure that we have the right track each time. I'm going to create a new folder called Tracks and save those according to the order that they're in in the track listing. And then of course we can load up Ultimate Vocal Remover and go through all of our files. And basically you can see the settings here, but I have selected Anthem Part 2 and then outputting the vocals to vocals. So with the resulting file, I can go ahead and make sure that it sounds good. Of course, I can't really play it for you due to copyright, but now is the time to actually start extracting vocal lines. And I like to give vocal lines that are about five to 10 seconds with no harmonies or vocals, which can be difficult, but they are there. Um, and so you'll see that I'm actually chopping this particular file up and I will save the resulting file as a wave. And that will just be in the Tom directory. So I'll just call that Tom01. And then I'll go ahead and repeat the same process multiple times until I have both Tom and Mark vocals. All right, so that does take a bit of time, but once we finish, uh, we should have a decent amount of wave files here. So you can see I have 42 different wave files for Mark's vocals. And then uh, I have, let's see, 43 for Tom. The number doesn't really matter, but you definitely want them to be under 10 seconds. I think most of mine are between five and 10 seconds. Um, so we can basically go to the GitHub repo that we're going to use to make all of the modeling magic happen. And this is basically a fork of, I, I don't even know how to say this, S-O-V-I-T-S service fork or something. Uh, and I would recommend that you read everything because I did this locally and I also have done this uh, in Google Colab as well. Um, I'm going to basically open up this notebook in Google Colab. Uh, and there's actually a link for that somewhere right here, you can actually just open it directly in Google Colab. So that is what I've done. And uh, I have opted for the, basically the premium version that costs 10 bucks, um, which allows me to get 100 compute units. I believe I have, uh, I've used most of those doing my previous models uh, for this experiment. But basically you should be able to do both models with 100 compute units, which is just 10 bucks. Uh, again, you can use your local GPU if you have one. I do have one, but you will find that the one that I am using right now, the A100, is significantly faster at anything pertaining to AI, machine learning, etc. So at this point, I'm basically just going to walk through this uh, Google Colab notebook, and we already see that we do have access to the NVIDIA A100. So now I'm going to mount my Google Drive so I can save the model and download it locally. And once that's done, we can go ahead and just install the dependencies here. And that does take a few minutes, but once it's done, we can go ahead and make our directory called dataset raw. 
And then we can open up the actual file browser here. And we see that there's a folder here that needs a couple other folders. Um, so I'm just going to do basically one at a time, right? So the first one I'm going to do is Tom DeLong. So I'll create a new folder and I'll call that Tom DeLong. And uh, then I'm going to create a new folder here just called singing. And within that folder, I'm just going to drop all of the Tom wave samples. And that'll take just a second. And now we can see all those files here. So I actually skip this part, this part, and then I kind of just go right to the automatic pre-processing. Um, so that'll do a few things. I think it copies those files somewhere else. And I'll just go ahead and hit the uh, go button here. And then we'll hit the pre-config. And then we will do the uh, copy of the config file, which I will then edit here in a moment. And so now I can actually modify that. I do need to refresh this folder and then you'll see that there is this configs directory. And I'm gonna make a couple modifications to config.json. Um, so I can just double click on that. So I'm gonna log every 100 uh, and then I'm just gonna keep the seed how it is. I'm gonna drop the epochs down to like 361 just so we have that extra one at the end. And I've actually followed some tutorials for doing something similar. And this is basically just the way that I've done it. I'm gonna leave everything else other than the batch size default. And this I'm gonna put up to like, I think I can put up to 40 because of the VRAM available in the A100. I'm just gonna put 36 though, just to be a little bit under that. And I think everything else can stay the same. Um, so I'll go ahead and just hit Control S to save. I think that saves and then I'll close this. So then I can change this method to crepe. Uh, this is actually a better vocal method from what I have found. And then we can go ahead and run this uh, pre-Hubert, which I don't actually know what that does, but uh, I think this is another one of those kind of like pre-training things. And so I don't actually need to do this. Um, I'm gonna remove it and then place a new snippet here and just do, I basically go back to uh, the GitHub repo and I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Actually, I just think it's SVC train. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do that and run it. And we can keep track of the progress here. You can see that it is going very quickly. Um, we're already closing in on 10%. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this sit. Uh, I am gonna keep an eye on the uh, compute units. Um, I do think this probably will get us close to zero. Um, so again, you can only really do I want to say two or three models this way with the uh, $10 uh, premium compute unit fee or whatever that they charge. Um, you can, of course, buy more compute units if you wanted to do more models. One weird thing that I've noticed, and you can probably see my mouse cursor like lagging like crazy, is that for whatever reason, Edge seems to lag really badly while training this model. It will stop if you minimize Edge, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then come back here in a few minutes. All right, so it took, it uh, looks like it took like four compute units. So it really isn't that bad. Uh, I thought it was going to take more than that. But in any case, if you look at the logs folder, there's now this uh, 361.pth file. You're actually interested in the one that starts with the G prefix. And so I'm going to go ahead and expand my drive here. And I already have one that I created earlier, but I have this Tom folder that I'm going to move this one into. And so now we can see that exists in the Tom folder. And I should be able to just open up my drive in a browser. And so now I actually see this file and I'm gonna download it locally and save it in the Tom directory. And as you can see here, uh, we can basically just launch the GUI of this tool um, and then we can load our model in it. So I have actually done a git clone of this to one of my directories here and I can just run svcg. So really quick, you also do need the config.json file. So I just went ahead and moved that over uh, to my drive and I'm gonna save that locally as well in the same directory. And now we can load that in the UI. So before we actually model the vocals, I just wanted to play basically a snippet or the instrumental that I had a buddy of mine create. Basically, I told him, 
hey, you know, this is the project that I'm working on. I want something that's kind of like one of those short Blank-182 songs that they do that's kind of like a joke or whatever, similar to Built This Pool or um, basically any of the other ones that are, they've done. They're usually about 15 to 20 seconds long. And he came up with this. So it's kind of boring without any vocals, obviously. So I went ahead and sang over this. Basically, I just opened this in uh, Audacity and then sang the parts over it, uh, writing some really cheesy lyrics that, of course, you can hear in the final version. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and listen to my vocals really quick. And her name was your mom. And, of course, I'm very sorry to put you through that. And then we can load up my vocal that I just played you. And make sure that this is on zero because we don't actually want to pitch shift and we do want it to be on the crepe mode. And I'll turn off autoplay and hit infer. And so now there's a new file here and we'll go ahead and listen to it. And her name was your mom. So that one sounds a little rough, but you can get the idea that after training this a couple of times, maybe using some different settings, et cetera, et cetera, you would have a pretty decent version of Tom. And so that is exactly what I did. Um, I would recommend messing around with the training data, maybe removing some stuff, adding some stuff. Um, there are other things that you can do like data augmentation, which is well beyond the scope of this video, but you can basically modify your data set uh, or your training data set a little bit by pitch shifting it and by doing stuff like mix-up augmentation and things of that nature. Um, I decided to mostly keep it simple, and so I just added some training data, subtracted some training data. But in any case, I went ahead and did the same exercise with Mark. I had trained a model based on the vocals that we extracted using Ultimate Vocal Remover, uh, and then basically put everything together. I sent it over to my buddy who created the initial instrumental who is much better at production than i am and of course this is the final result thank you so much for watching if you have any questions i'd be happy to help just throw them in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next one you know i risk it all for the dance, all the distress, no, no.